fundamentally, deep, deep inside is a, an act of, a function of, a performance of, a manifestation of the works. Next up, last but not least, is Nico. He's the man behind our beloved character Blue, the Raptor. His passion for playing her is impossible not to notice. His commitment to his interests in general and passions knows no bounds. When Nico loves something, he completely immerses himself into that interest. You'll see what I'm talking about as we sit down with him and talk about all his disciplines and interests. One of my biggest interests, which I've found about maybe five years ago, was writing. Um... I've heard you talk about it a few times. I'm actually curious what you write about. I haven't asked you because I was kind of saving it for this. <laughs> yeah, so I've been like in the process of making my own sort of like comic book series for like Snap, for, for like uh, Spider Man, Power Rangers. Uh, I'm trying to get something into DC, but Spider Man has been like my main focus. Yeah, and I've been like dropping like so much writing into it for like the past like five or six years, um, kind of like giving a whole new sort of story, mm-hmm. but still connecting it with, like, the the original storyline of how uh, he became Spider-Man. So one of those, like, keeping it... The villains. The, the, um, almost, like, the general format of it. Like, yeah. it makes me think of the Spider-Verse, like, how they all had a different story, but it was in the format of the same story. Yeah. So, Something like, like, um, like, Peter Parker gets bit on a field trip. Mm-hmm. They get us, like, a... Well, like, in the movie, how he was, like, a huge science center kind of thing. Yeah. Um... And, like, I just switched up, like, where they are and, like, what the the origins are a little bit. But, like, still trying to keep true to it. Yeah. But with that, it's going to be both, like, a writing and photography project. So instead of, like, illustrations, I'm going to be doing a lot of photo manipulation and oh, like, doing, uh, like, live shots. A bunch of composites and stuff? Yeah. Like, is there going to... Are you in um, cosplay? Doing cosplay stuff with it, too? I've done a lot of that. Yeah. But I don't, I don't really want to be in it. Because okay. I want to, like, more so, like, uh, direct everything I want to, like, yeah. make sure everything's, like, this is how it should be, um, this composition should be, like, like this, stuff like that. Oh, that's cool, man. Uh, your history with writing, which I think you've kind of covered already, which was, like, it's kind of, in the past couple of years, you yeah. said? Yeah. Um, so even it's... before that, I uh, took a creative writing class in high school, mm-hmm. and I... Wrote like a little like fairy tale kind of like story for my ex girlfriend at the time. Um, her sister was going through like a really weird thing in her life, mm-hmm. and it was like a whole like secrets and um, telling the truth kind of thing. And um, my girlfriend at the time, like we were super close. I was super close with her family and like everybody she knew. And her sister like was really like really liked me. Like she yeah. thought like I was really cool and like I was always around hanging out with her and like, our family just, like, talking and just getting to know, like, what she's doing in school and stuff. Yeah. But it was like, a huge, like, dramatic thing that, like, really, like, affected their family as a whole. But she, like, confided in me in something that didn't really confide in her sisters or her sister and her brother. And I was kind of, like, writing the story be like, hey, the story's for you. I want you to know that you're not alone. Yeah. And despite whatever this secret is that you have... You should still tell someone because it's going to have an impact on both you and your family, but it needs to get out kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so it's like a personal story that yeah. like, writing was like an outlet for it yeah. in a way. Yeah. And it sort of helped me like help her get out of the whole thing and like just realize that telling the truth is like a huge deal for everybody. Yeah. So it was kind of like a big thing for me. I'm like, wow, I just made like a whole like story about like telling the truth and stuff. And yeah. it kind of like branched me out because it it was kind of hard to like jump into that because i never really i have a huge imagination but like writing was ever like my strong suit and then in college i t- took another creative writing class because i was just like easy a eh? like wouldn't be a big deal um teacher was very strict on what he wanted <laughs> so it kind of helped me like veer into like how structure has to be yeah so that helped me out a lot and i even wrote like about like zombies and um aliens so i wish i still had the documents but i was didn't have you know them. i was leading <laughs> not leading but like i was being time i'm like where is all this stuff yeah <laughs> um yeah all, everything else before college and in yeah. college i don't really have but really the only one i have is like the spider-man the power rangers and um 
like the horror story ideas that's mm-hmm. i still have those like on my phone saved but i'm trying to work to get myself a computer so i can actually like you dive have a into computer it. right now i don't have a computer right now nigo all this time i thought you had a computer <laughs> oh no i just do it on my phone oh geez. but uh yeah because like some people are telling me like oh you can still do it on your phone I'm, like it's a lot different from like being on your phone because like, i get easily distracted with like apps like even though like, I'm trying to get into the writing, yeah. I just know the apps and like other things are there. So like people texting me. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, but like once I'm in it, I'm just like, I'm. Ah, I need to get you a laptop, Nico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working towards that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get a, a MacBook, and from then on, just keep it going. Just on go. This tour. Yeah, that's awesome. Nice, dude. Um, next question is why why writing? Um, I feel like you kind of touched on it, but I guess you didn't dive into it the way yeah. you probably could uh why writing uh, it writing definitely helped me grow a little bit better as a person and even um managing my thought process yeah and it helped me explore a little bit more interests that i have and eventually i want to become like a writer producer and director kind of thing mm-hmm. um and on this tour it's helped me a lot because i know like meeting everyone is like their backgrounds like stunts um acting um even like talking with like the directors it gives me more insight to like learn more about the the art and eventually make yeah. give me more info like make my own movie or write my own movie yeah oh god how have you liked performing in chicago i feel like i should have asked that at some point <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how's I how's it about. been being in chicago it's home for you yeah um being back in chicago really is like the whole like I don't know, I, I'm a loss for words for this, but, like, it was super <laughs> yeah. it was super exciting to be back in Chicago and, like, perform for, like, all my friends and family. Um, even being in the show, I had, like, a huge adrenaline rush, like, every show call we had. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's why you see me spring. How did your family like it? Uh, they loved it. Um, they loved all the Jurassic Park movies, so it was just, like, yeah. they, they originally thought it was going to be part of it, the movies, but I'm like, no, it's definitely in between, but... They were definitely loving of it. They just didn't expect a whole lot of how it was, especially the the Tyrannosaurus Rex. I'm like, yeah, it's pretty life size, and it's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's pretty life size. <laughs> um, pretty life size. <laughs> better, that's what's gonna look like. Yeah. A real dinosaur. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, they they loved the show, and I think I had some of my friends come see it. Yeah. And they were like blown away by it, and they're just like, oh, like our little friend is an actor and famous now. I'm like, I'm not famous <laughs> just yet, but it's. I guess you could say I'm an actor. You get actor. to be it's... around that, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, franchise. And yeah. Like, was it, you, you're the one that spotted the director first, uh, Colin Trevorrow. Trevorrow. Yes. Gosh, uh, I <laughs> I don't know why I struggle saying his last name so much. <laughs> it's almost like you're saying, trying to say tomorrow. Okay. It's a little bit. I, I've done that once. Yeah. I was like, Colin Trevorrow. I'm like, mm, it's not Colin that. Colin Trevorrow. It's not that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, doing the meet and greet, I... For some reason, like, it was Madison's wording that was struck me. Mm-hmm. So then looking around and then just seeing him. And, like, I've, like, researched, like, directors and stuff to try to see, like, what their other movies are. Then I just stunned mm-hmm. from that. Kind of like how I do with actors as well. Um, and, like, I just remembered a picture of him. And he's like, oh, my God, like, this is him. Um, I have to make him know that he was the one in charge and he was the one that did all this. Yeah. So it's just like in that moment, I had a uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom where Owen meets up with Blue again. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like, oh, we're reconnecting. So it's kind of yeah. just like I had that mindset the minute I saw him. I'm just like, this is it. Like you've met your the yeah. guy who made yeah. you. So like it's your dad in a way. Yeah. So it was kind of like it was really intimidating, but also like really like. Heart, heartwarming because like I got to meet someone who worked on a franchise that I loved when I was a kid and to almost have like his blessing and like after the end of the show was just like unreal yeah that was that was super cool yeah so it was definitely a uh, tearjerker and a whole like life milestone for me <laughs> that was awesome so it was pretty cool yeah well cool man it's been a pleasure yeah. thank you so much again um this is Nico <laughs> Milwaukee. Isn't Milwaukee an Indian name? Yes, Pete, it is. Actually, it's pronounced Milwaukee. 
which is Algonquin for the good land. This is uh, easily probably the best pizza I've had on tour at this point. Charles, you kind of feeling a little something similar? I'm 100% agreeing. This makes me, like, I take a bite and I want to slow down and appreciate every taste that I'm experiencing. Mm -hmm. Even the crust, man, is like nice and soft. It's, the point is, flavor-wise, it is delicious. Even the pepperoni that, that from the Pizza Charles got, wow. Oh yeah, I felt that cold. <laughs>